Hi everyone, welcome to my Batastero guided build. Uh, and by, by guided, I mean we're going to take you through uh, from start to finish how to uh, download Batastero, how to get started, how to install it, how to do sort of the initial setup and configuration. Which, uh, to be honest, with Batastero, there's not a great deal. You add your games um, and, and away you go, really. Uh, that's the whole idea behind it. Um, so, yeah, we're going to supply um, the info how to do it, how to build it, uh, the games, the artwork, themes everything so you yeah everything you need from here um it's much like my recent um retro bat uh, guided build which is don't, don't worry for those following that that is still going um but i'm just looking to start this one uh, alongside it um so that will continue um and with that one that's, there's several videos in that that series now adding systems as, as we go building up the uh, building up the, uh, the image um so yeah so this one is batasera um hopefully if you found this video you already know what batasera is uh, if you don't and just stumbled across it, um, hopefully you're familiar with something like Retrobat. It's basically it's, it's a game, another gaming front end, uh, but I guess it differs from, from other ones in the fact that it's it's all kind of self-contained and uh, runs on its own operating system. Uh, it's actually based on on Linux. So just for comparison, something like Retrobat is obviously it's a bit of software, an application that runs on Windows. Um, so you have your Windows PC, you install Retrobat, and then you can either just you know fire it up when you you want a quick some retro gaming action. Uh, and then you can stop it again and just carry on using your PC as normal, but your everyday, you know, web browsing and email, etc. Um, or you, you could have it auto start with Windows. So if you've got you know, a machine you're dedicated for emulation and gaming, you could have obviously have Retrobat running and auto start every time you turn the PC on. Um, but the way Batasura is different, like I say, it's got its own operating system. So the idea is you write it to uh, either a USB device, whether that's a USB stick or USB hard drive or an SD card. Um, or even the internal hard drive of a PC. If you've got a dedicated machine that you're always going to run it on, you basically install it to the to the hard disk. Uh, then turn the machine on and it either boots in that hard drive straight into Batasera or boots off a USB stick straight into Batasera and away you go. And obviously if you're using a USB option, you can obviously then just you know, do it on your everyday PC, uh, stick the USB stick in, boot off it, play away, and then once you're finished, shut the PC down, take your USB stick out, USB drive and then boot PC up as normal back into Windows. So another thing as well, being on the USB stick, you can obviously then take it around and uh, uh, move it between machines. Um, but obviously, like I say, as you see, the video running in the background is kind of one of their um, promo videos. Um, so it's not just for sort of for PCs. You, uh, Batasera, you can install on many handheld devices, handheld gaming devices, on the Raspberry Pi, you know, and other single board devices. There's some random things like um, sort of like all-in-one arcade controllers with the games and stuff built in. You can install it on things like that. So I guess yeah, that's where it differs from from Retrobat. I mean, when you when it's up and running, they look very similar. They're both based on Emulation Station, as you can see on the screen now. Um, it's the Emulation Station actual front end that you use. It's just sort of the the underlying stuff underneath it is different. Batasera runs on its own Linux operating system, so it's self-contained. And Batasera, uh, sorry, Retrobat runs on top of Windows. Um, so yeah, without going on too much longer, let's, let's go on with the video. Um, and the, the second part of this is actually kind of, I'm just reusing uh, an install guide that I did uh, a little while ago. So in a second, the video is going to flip over to that. So, and in there also I take you through the install and everything. And I'll go through a, um, an example of, of adding the, the Mega Drive system and then how to scrape all the artwork. Which obviously you won't need to do because I'm also going to provide everything here in the download links in the description. The, the Mega Drive games and all the artwork is already there. You just basically copy them over. Um, but yeah, so it's just there, for, I guess, for completeness to show if you do want to add your own games, um, how you do it and how you scrape the artwork. But like I say, in in this um, in in this guided build, several videos take you through how to how to set it up and uh, and get going. And then in each each video there'll be. Um, more games to add, more packs available. So obviously the links have been in the descriptions of those videos. So like I say, for, for this one, for the video that's about to come, it'll it'll show you through the install, and then it'll show at the end how to, to add the Mega Drive and add and scrape all the artwork for it. But you can kind of ignore that for now because the download link I'll provide in the description is the Mega Drive games and all the artwork, and you literally just just copy it over, which I'll uh, then show again at, just at the end of the video to just confirm that. Um, so yeah, so without, without further ado, let's let's crack on. Um, so the video is going to flip over now to the, like I say, to the um, 
installation guide I did recently. Um, at the time of making that, I think it was on version 35 of Batasira. I think today, as of recording this, we're on version 37. But obviously the process is exactly the same. You download the image, burn it onto whichever media you've chosen, whether that's internal hard drive, a USB stick, an SD card, it depends on what device you're installing it on. Um, uh, and then, then away you go, you follow the install. So I'll be quiet now and then hand over to myself <laughs> for the rest of the guide and then I'll pop back at the end of the video just to, just to show the Mega Drive bits and pieces um, and show what's in, those, in the links in the description. So yeah, um, if you haven't done already, please subscribe. Like I said, it's going to be a series of videos um, and you'll get, yeah, it's completely free. Click on the subscribe button, you'll get notifications when the next ones come out. So you'll, you'll be aware. And like I say, it's going to build up and then we're going to end up with a you know, fully loaded system with a whole, you know, a whole bunch of systems all configured to go. Um, and we'll go through things like sort of you know, extra bits and pieces and tweaking and extra features we can set up. So, yeah, hope you enjoy. Um, any comments, feedback, let me know. And um, I'm going to hand over to myself. Uh, this is the Battersea website. So, Battersea.org, obviously, put all the links in the description. Um, at the time of recording this, uh, version 35 is the latest version, so click on get, get back theory here. So like I say, it's available for loads and loads of different platforms. We're going to do, um, I guess, the, the, the main one for um, Intel-based desktops, laptops, um, or the Intel Nook, that kind of device, or even more modern Intel-based Apple devices. So that's the, uh, the link there. There's a version for the Steam Deck as well. And if you scroll down the list here, you've got a whole bunch of handheld devices, retro gaming devices, which you can put this on. And they've all got their you know, direct link here to the, to the image. Um, obviously the Raspberry Pi, the various versions. Um, some other single board devices. Uh, you know, little, little mini devices. Um, other random ones like the Capcom um, Home Arcade device and controller. Um, and then right at the bottom of here, even if you've got a very old PC that's kicking around, you know, got it stuck in the carriage or the loft or wherever, not use it for a while, it, it's worth digging it out because even these very old systems they've got here 15 plus, so, so it's a slightly different version for them that's it's going to work on the older 32 bit architecture. And same for the Atom, even these systems are going to play, you know, your basic, your basic games, your basic Master System, NES, probably SNES and Mega Drive as well, that kind of stuff. Obviously, depending on the spec of them, but yeah. So even if you've got a very old PC, you can turn it into a gaming, a retro gaming system, really, really easy. So yeah, um, like I say, the, the process is pretty much the same. No matter what device you're using, you, what we're going to do is download an image, put it onto either the device, an SD card, a USB stick, a USB attached hard drive, or an internal hard drive, whatever you want, whatever works best for you, or whatever your situation is. You're basically going to grab the image and, and burn it to it. So Direct link here to the image. Once you click on it, it should just download. I'm not going to do that because I've already got it. But yeah, you just click on click on save as or however you'd normally download stuff. Where you've got a download, download manager. So basically, once you grab the image, let's have a quick look here. Um, let's drag that into view. So I have downloaded it already. Like I say, it's in my temp folder here. Uh, sorry, I lie. It's in my downloads folder. Uh, so there. So basically, you're going to get this. Um, compressed image format. Um, so I've got 7-zip installed, which is why it's got that icon. So if you open it in your favourite favourite app for extracting, I'd, I'd really recommend 7-zip, um, it works really well. Um, you see here you've got the image file. So you would just literally take this and drag it out into the, uh, into the folder. This will go through and extract it. And the next thing we can do is actually then take this image uh, and write it to the device. Um, so it's, it's worth saying that if you're running Batasira, it's basically, it doesn't take over your, your whole system, obviously you depend on how you use it. You, you could have a dedicated retro gaming device that you want to put it on, but if you've only got one PC um, that you use day to day, you know, in Windows or, or Linux or whatever, for your day to day things, you can put Batasira onto a USB attached device and just temporarily boot off it and play. And when you've finished, you shut down, unplug it, and then boot your machine back up normally into Windows. Or if you do have a second PC or a system, a Raspberry Pi, whatever it might be, that you're dedicating to, uh, to, to emulation and to retro gaming, then yeah, you can yeah, write it to um, the main storage on that device and just have it boot off it every single time. But I'll show you show you both uh, both options. So anyway, once this is downloaded, 
and once you've extracted it you have the image file the next thing is to to um, burn it or copy it to our our chosen our chosen device so to do that we've got this thing called etcher which is probably I mean, most people probably have heard of it if you've done any kind of flashing or, or writing images before it's kind of like the go-to one at the moment um, so just click download and you've got a couple of different uh, different um, options I tend to go for the portal version basically that just means that it's all contained in a single folder or file it's not going to install to your system it's just going to stick it into one folder so you know it's not going to spread files here there and everywhere so that's one that's the version I like to get so we'll click download again I do already have this but I'm going to do it anyway I'll stick it in that stick it in that downloads folder as well it's not particularly big so just while that's downloading, if you go back to the here, they, uh, back to Batteria website, they do have their own guide here, which I'll see. Feel, feel free to follow. Um, but you can say, so just so you see, it, it recommends Etcher as well. So um, but there's a bit more detail in here, you know, screenshots on, on how to do it, and then um, things you want to resize the disk. And again, when you come to booting your device up, if you are um, booting from USB, if you want to use it from a USB device and just temporarily play some gaming. Um, there's sort of notes around here about entering the, the, uh, the temporary boot option menu. Because normally with a PC, it'll boot off your internal hard drive, your first internal hard drive, uh, depending you know, if you've got more than one. Um, but if you want to temporarily boot off a USB drive, um, so there's some systems you put it in, it will, if it finds USB, it will boot off it, that's what you find. If not, you may need to press either F10, F11, F12, to bring up uh, what they call it, a temporary boot, uh, uh, boot menu or uh, boot list and that's basically that you know one-time boot um, different from the default so yeah, you hit, hit the button you get a menu like similar to what you've got on screen here <clears throat> and you should find in that list your your USB device or SD card or whatever it is that you put the image onto and you basically select it here and so and for that boot it'll boot off the USB drive and then it takes you through the rest, rest of the stuff and then there's, there's a whole bunch of um, troubleshooting here which you may or may not need hopefully not um, about you know what if you're flashing to the device and it fails what if you, you if it fails to boot for whatever reason there's a couple of options here about um, uh, if he, um, UEFI you can boot uh, uh, firmware settings that you might need to turn on off and secure boot and leg legacy boot all that kind of stuff but hopefully you won't need and here's how to do it in a Mac if you want to uh, boot off a different device in a, on a Mac device and yeah hope, hope loads of help in here but like I say hopefully you won't need this it's there it's there if you do so anyway back to our image we downloaded and back to to etcher so see we've got the portable version here if i just run this he says it's coming <clears throat> right so here we go so very basic interface so Flash from file. There's different ones where you, you can basically yeah, clone the existing device, flash from a URL, and it will go off and download the file for you, all that kind of stuff. But we want the top option, flash from file. So I downloaded the image uh, into downloads, did I? Yeah, so obviously you don't want the compressed version, you want the one you uncompressed, the image file, IMG. Yeah, okay, on that, it, so it's loaded it now, the Batasera the version 35, and the date after it. Now select target. It will show. Also, be careful at this point if you're if you're booting from. Also, you're in Windows, and presumably you don't want to. Or you, you probably never want to overwrite your your C drive, your your system drive. So it does flag up that this is your system drive. Be careful. Don't pick this one. So we also we don't want to. So I've put in um, this 16 gig USB 3 stick. I'm going to use just for this. So I just tick that box. And there's a couple of other drives I've got in my system, which it's just warning that you know these are quite big. You know, it's quite clever the fact these are large drives you should, this probably isn't the one you want to pick um, but anyway make sure you pick the right one that's, that's vital so I've got it selected there and then click flash um, that's pretty much it it pops up with this little um, uh, elevation prompt just click yes to that and it'll start now there's a little bit of I guess advertising or you know sort of promotion type on the right hand side here saying other stuff you can do with a Raspberry Pi, which you know, might find useful. Um, so you see now it's flashing away. So it's, it's nearly seven gig the image. 
So it will take a few minutes. So what I'll probably do, like I say, it's quite quite quick. What I'll probably do is just let this run, and I'll pause the video and come back when this is either very nearly done or done. So I'll be back in, well, instantly. Okay, <clears throat> there we go. Magic skips to the end. Ninety-eight percent. Ninety-nine. And now it's going to validate. <laughs> so it does the double double check if it's written the, the image correctly. Just does a, a quick compare. This bit is a bit quicker. It's still going to take a little while. So what I'll do rather than doing it again, I'll just click skip. I'm going to presume it's okay. So anyway, yeah, there we go. Once it's finished, um, flash complete. You can either flash another or, uh, or just close and carry on. So now we're ready to take the, uh, the USB stick we've just uh, just imaged so just off screen here I'll, I'll go in and um, find the USB icon on the system tray right click and eject, eject that, that drive and um, before I do that you just have a look you can't see much within Windows itself if you look at here um, I'm not even sure it's showing up initially um, just for completeness I will I'll eject it and put it back in and then you'll be able to see exactly how much you can't see. <laughs> so it's basically because you've got a, a boot partition, a rather small boot partition in the beginning of the drive. Um, let's see, where yeah, basically. So there's not much content here. There's, there's the stuff it needs to boot off basically. Um, and then once it um, once it does the first boot, it expands and creates partitions and sorts itself out. Um, and then basically boots up. So it's all all, all all automatic, and it's designed to then use the full size of your device. So I've got a 16 gig um, USB drive here. So what it do on first boot is resize and use up for all, all the 16 gig. If you've got a bigger drive, it'll do the same. You know, it could be 500 gig hard drive, a one terabyte hard drive. It will basically expand to use the whole space. It'll make all the space available. So you've got plenty of room for your games. Um, but having said that, once once it's done all that and you've you've got a a better image on, on your device. If you do plug it into Windows device, you'll see this boot partition again, but you won't see the actual main partition which holds all the ROMs. That's basically because it's a Linux format um, partition that Windows can't read, well, can't read natively. There are utilities you can get if you want to, um, but you don't, don't need to. Um, there's much easier, better ways to get your ROMs and stuff onto it, um, which we'll, we'll go through once we've got up and running. So yeah, that's basically the device there. So like I say, you unplug it, you put it into your device uh, and then boot up. Um, so they depend, depend on whether you're booting off USB or whether you're actually imaging a hard drive to go in a separate machine. Um, you can do that. You can basically take it, plug it in, away you go, boot up. If it's a USB device, like I said on before on their, on their guide, you may need to hit um, F9, 10, 11 or 12, something like that to go into a, to a boot menu, pick USB device and then boot um, and you're all good. So like I say, yeah, you, you could um, as I mentioned just then, you, you could image a hard drive that you've got attached to this, this PC uh, and put it into another PC that you're going to use for, for gaming. Um, obviously that, that's fine, you can do it that way. But if you don't want, you don't fancy you know, take, physically taking the hard drive out of that device, plugging it into your Windows machine, imaging it, unplugging it, putting it back in the device. There's a much easier way to do that, which I'll show as well. You can just use a USB drive temporarily. So what, basically what I've just done there image it to a, a USB drive, plug that USB drive into your re what's going to be your retro gaming machine, boot it up normally, and bring, bring Bratisera up, uh, and then there's an option within the menu to install to a new hard drive or to a new device, and then you can basically use that to write to the hard drive that's in that device, and then once you've done that, you no longer need the USB drive, you unplug that, and it'll then boot off the internal hard drive. Um, so yeah, there's different options you've got, depending on what, what suits your needs, and like I say, whether you've got a single PC, you're just looking to boot off temporarily from USB, or you, you may even want to make a USB stick that you can take with you and travel. So I don't know, you know, depend on you know, whether you go and see your friends or you're traveling with work and you've got a PC with you, access to a PC, you can have everything on a USB drive. Obviously, it depends how big it is, how many games you can fit on it. So all you really need is a USB drive, access to a computer and, and a controller, be it you know, a USB controller or a a, a Bluetooth controller, when I say controller, I mean a gamepad. Um, 
to play the game. So yeah, you could yeah, basically do that, take around your mate's house and have a bit of fun there. So anyway, rather than rambling on, let's um, let's see what happens when you first boot, boot the system up. So what, I'm actually going to do it inside a, a virtual machine on, on here, running inside um, Oracle VirtualBox. So you just get to see it rather than trying to do it on a physical machine. It's easier for me just to record it in here. So I basically created a, a generic virtual machine here with a couple of gig of RAM um, and then I've attached um, what I did separately to this is just put that battery image onto a virtual hard drive rather than putting, so rather than imaging it onto a onto a USB stick like we just did, which is probably what you're doing. I've just imaged it onto a virtual hard drive that goes into this virtual machine, but kind of ignore that. That's this is just the purposes of recording it. So what I'll do is I'll start this up and you'll see what it what it'll look like. Let's move this up way. So you'll see kind of roughly what it looks like when you uh, when you boot it up yourself. So here's the virtual machine starting up. Like I say, this is this will be the same as if you pop in your uh, your drive in. It does play some music there, but I've obviously got that muted, so you don't hear it. And then I think what you probably didn't see is right at the beginning, there's like a, a very, for a brief second, a, um, probably take longer on, on, depending on the size of your drive, but kind of a, I guess a text DOS based screen, which just shows the, uh, where it expand, expands the, uh, the partition to the full size of your device. That'll flash out briefly, and then it'll boot up like this. So this is it up and running. Like I say, it's kind of pre configured out the box ready to go. There's a couple of, kind of, I guess, public domain or open source games that are on here, like kind of homebrew type games that are costly free, they, they can package them. So there's a couple of games on here to get, get you going if you want to have a look. Yeah, so Space Twins. Yeah. No tells. So yeah, there's a couple of games to get you going, but also you want to, you want to pretty much add your own games. So, right, so first boot, <clears throat> we're, we're good to go. So if we're just going to use it off the USB, or if we, this is on a, so this could be any device now. Obviously we're doing it on a, on a Windows a X64 type device, but this could be any device. This could be Raspberry Pi or anything. The interface or the once you're in bad series is pretty much the same. So first thing I, I tend to do is, obviously before setting any controllers, etc., you can use a, use a keyboard um, to, to move around with the, the arrow keys, hit spacebar to bring up the menu. And again, use arrow keys, hit enter to select something, escape to, to come out. Um, if you do want to set up your, your controllers, and you hit the space wipe in the main menu, and you've got a control and Bluetooth settings here. Now, I don't have Bluetooth on, on this machine, but you can go in here, say, pair of Bluetooth device, hit, hit enter here, and then once you've done that, put your gamepad into pairing mode, um, and it'll basically detect it and auto auto connect it up. And then from that point, you've got to use your gamepad to scroll through the menus. You'll press basically green or the A button, wherever it might be, to select and press the red button or the B button to go back or come out of a menu. Same as I'm doing here, pressing escape. So, so yeah, this is the, uh, you don't really need to change much else in here. Um, there's some options here to, to show activity, i.e. when you're, if you've got a Bluetooth gamepad, whether it, whether it connects or disconnects, uh, and also the, the battery level. Again, if it's a uh, um, rechargeable or, or I guess if it's, it's standard, standard batteries, it'll show the, the power level that you've got left in the batteries, which is quite handy. And also you've got the option to, uh, to figure a device, disconnect something. And there's controller mapping. If you need to change the mapping of the keys, hopefully, I think most people wouldn't. Like I say, it's all kind of plug and play and, and you know, fit, follows a standard standard um, button mapping. But, you know, if you want to change it, this is where you change it. So, like I say, yeah, first thing to do is sort out the controller. Um, I'm just going to carry on using the keyboard. It's easier. So, first thing to do, come down to system settings. And then you've got things like the uh, language and the region. I think this defaults to US, uh, and it may or may not pick up the right time zone. But just just change it. Hit enter, and you've got a list of all the different time zones, European ones. And I think above this is yeah, kind of generic ones. But anyway, pick pick, pick the right time zone. Pick the right language. You've got a whole bunch in here. Like I, said, I think US is the default. Um, so yeah, pick that and then hit escape when you're done. Um, 
If, if, you, want to, if you want to scrape artwork, download any extra themes, check for updates, all that kind of stuff, you need to make sure your network's connected. So if you've got a hardwired um, or you know, um, cabled connection, you should be good. It should connect connected straight away. Um, the indicator is the uh, is the indicator top right here to show you've got um, a network connection. If your device has got Wi-Fi, obviously you come in here, you hit enter to turn this on. Um, I, also I don't have Wi-Fi on here, but if you do hit enter, turn it on, and you'll then get two boxes that say enter the, the Wi-Fi SSID and the password to connect to. So quite simple. And also you can change the host name in here as well. So the, the, the name that appears on, on your home network if you if you want to, or maybe you've got more than one Batasura running. Um, you can, yeah, Batasura 1, Batasura 2, or something a bit more descriptive. Um, you can do that here as well. So yeah, make sure the network's connected. Um, otherwise you won't get very far. Um, so also we downloaded the latest image, so we should be good to go, but you can go to updates and, and uh, check for updates here automatically. I think it does it, it definitely does it at the startup, but it does per periodically through that, I'm not sure, but it will check for, for updates and prompt you if there's a, a new version released. Um, if you do want to, um, stable is the default, kind of like so when it's generally released, the next version, obviously this is 35, 36 will be out at some point. Um, but I believe 36 is in beta testing at the moment, so if you want to um, check for updates against beta, you change this to beta. So if we go stable and say start update, it will do a check. No updates available, we've got the, got the right version. If my network or internet connection wasn't working, you'd have an error here about not going to connect. Um, so if I change this temporarily just to beta, say update, and it's kind of saying, you're on version 35, there is a, you see here, 36 dev, and then uh, obviously the, the version and, and date of that uh, particular build. Um, so if you want to try out the new build, you can, but obviously you'll see the caveat that it's a beta, and there might be bugs and issues and things not working, so I'll just say no for now and put that back to stable. So anyway, um, that's that piece. Um, I'll come back out for a second. So this is kind of the basic interface. Yeah, yeah, it's perfectly, perfectly nice, <laughs> it works, works really well. But there are a whole bunch of themes you can put on to change the look and feel. So I would recommend that. So hit space again, and we'll come down to user interface settings. And here we've got the theme set. Hit enter here. Like I say, you've got the, the, only the one at the moment, which is this, uh, this carbon theme. But if we go back to where we were a second ago, and the updates and download. Um, actually, I'll go through each of these. So the content downloader, um, this is where you can download some additional, I guess, more homebrew um, and free games for each system. Um, there's things about um, adding on uh, retro achievements. There's some um, bezels. So bezels are the, the, the basically the borders that appear either side or around the screen when you're playing. Sometimes, normally they tend to make it look like a TV screen or a themed to the console you're running. There's options in here to download bezels. There are lots of different systems. Again, some, some games for the 364. And another free game for Dreamcast. There's a whole bunch of stuff here you can download if you want. So get some more free games and a few bits and pieces. I, I don't really tend to use this. Like you can do some music here, some more background music. There is, when Batasira plays, there is some background music. So you can, I've muted it. But if you want to do that, you go into the uh, sound menu. You can change the volume of everything. Um, turn front end music on. I've turned it off for the moment, so it doesn't, doesn't actually play. Um, and then I believe somewhere you, you can pick you can pick the song titles. Well, I think it might just um, pick them automatically. So, and then you can say only play system specific music folder. So you can um, have music that matches your system. But anyway, we won't worry about that at the moment. Go back, go back to where I was, the updates. Uh, themes is what I want to talk about. Um, bezels is another piece to talk about first. Um, so the bezel project is a kind of a, a separate standalone project, which is basically aiming to create as many uh, bezels as possible. So themed bezels for each game. So when you load up a game, say you load up Donkey Kong, you have the bezel on the outside of the screen, which matches Donkey Kong. Um, so yeah, it, this makes it look just a much better experience. So you've basically got the packs here from the from the bezel project online. You can go through and just click on each one, 
you can say down there. So at the moment, it's only showing the systems that I've got. So obviously, these are the thick systems that come with Battersea. They've got, like I say, got those couple of freeware open source games that you can download the uh, the bezels for all of these. Um, uh, and as you add more systems, you'll have more available in here. Uh, and then the one I was going to show originally is Steams. So like you see, see here they've got little little uh, screenshots or thumbnail there of what the theme looks like. You can scroll through the list. There's quite a few on here. Really nice ones. So I tend to go for near the top of the list. Obviously, have a look through. There's there's loads. Um, I quite like uh, the art flicks. So you just hit enter on it, hit enter again to install, add to the download key, you see the top right, it's going to download. It tells you how much it's done, it doesn't tell you how big it is, but I, haven't, you know, I don't think I've found a, somewhere that shows you how big it is, but this is, it takes a few minutes to download. I'll let that go for a minute. What you can actually do is, is, is while it's downloading, just come out. It, it's, it's still downloading in the background, so that's fine. So, so to get, get get games on, um, like I say, it's, it's easier probably to do it over your home network. Um, I think you probably can do it by USB as well. If you've got a USB drive full of ROMs that you want to stick into a machine and copy onto the into the internal hard drive or to the USB stick, you can do that as well. Um, so I guess. Let's do the network first. So like I say, make sure the network's connected, like we've already done. So we get the IP address, 192.168.1.52 is the IP of here. So on our Windows machine, we're now going to do just browse for this. So double backslash 192.168.1.52. And just drag that down to view. So now, like you see, we've got a a Windows file share, which is basically a, the folder or the the, uh, the share from the Batasura box. So double click in here, you've got a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so two ones to really worry about are, are the BIOS. Uh, so for a lot of the a lot of the consoles and systems to run, they need a copy of the BIOS file in the particular console. Again, this is something there's some in, that you can, that they can provide. They're provided in here, but majority because of copyright. Um, and legality reasons they can't supply them but um, I found a, a good a good source of a, a BIOS pack which basically has a whole pack of all the BIOSes you could possibly ever need for Batasera um, you basically get that download it and copy it into this folder I'll leave the link in the description um, can't say more than that <laughs> you understand why um, so yeah grab that and you should be good to go just copy it all into this folder here uh, and then you go back to the share level and you've got the ROMs folder and this is what I'm saying, oh, so what I said before is there's a whole bunch of uh, folders in here for all the different systems that you could possibly add to Batasera. 170 different folders, 170 different systems you can add in. Um, and they're, all, they're all fairly obvious, if not you can check the Batasera website. But uh, yeah, the Panasonic, 3D, Panasonic 3DO, um, Nintendo 3DS, um, Amiga, Ataris, a whole different bunch. So basically if you're going to put some games in, you'll take them and you copy into the right folder. So what I did, I'll do that quickly. Um, so let's say you do Mega Drive. So I go to games on my system. Um, I have a best of collection here. Uh, let's go Mega Drive. So a bunch of games in here. Um, these are the artworks uh, folders, which obviously I've, I've already scraped before and taken a copy of, but we won't do those for now because um, We'll do the scraping. So I'll select everything in here. There's a game list as well, which it, it, this is where it, what it generates when it adds games. Um, so I don't, I don't want to take that. I want to do everything from scratch. So, so basically, yeah, here's a roughly 100, 100 odd games. So I'll Control C, copy that, or you can select everything and right click copy, uh, and then go back to where you were. So into the ROMs folder, and in here should be a Mega Drive folder. There we go. There's an empty games list in here. This is the free game that you can already see within the within the menu. Uh, there's an info file here, and mo you know, most of the shared ROMs folders do have an info. It basically, if I just move that into view, 
it basically tells you, okay, here's, a, here's the uh, extensions I accept. Um, there's a brilliant wiki, a bit of a battery wiki that tells you all about the Mega Drive, um, how to add games, or basically you know, what format they're in, any kind of boss fight might need, all that kind of stuff you can find in this link. Um, hopefully you won't need it, but like I say, it's, it's in the info file and a lot of these ROM folders have those anyway to help you out. So right, just now I'm going to right click and paste. So Mega Drive games aren't particularly big. So let's copy those in. So move it out of the way, go back to our machine here. Just hit escape. And so if we just go across to Mega Drive now, you'll see there's one game at the bottom here. You've got one game. Just go into it to show that single game. And then to get it to rescan, you can either just hit space bar, go down to the bottom, do quick and then do a restart. Or what we should be able to do is go to game settings and say update game list. You really want to do this? Yep. And there you go. We've now got 102 games. And here they all are. Obviously at the moment there's no artwork. But what we'll do, we'll show you next how to do that. How to get all that artwork. So that's that system added. Like I say, you can add multiple systems in one go, just copy everything in and update the game list and and away you go. So at this point now we're ready to go. We can go and we can find a Mega Drive game and play it. And that could be you done. Let's see how well this works in a in the virtual machine. It might run okay, might not. That's there you go, yeah. That plays okay. Also I haven't got the controller set up, so just use the keyboard. And again I have got the uh, audio muted so but yeah, you have to trust me, it is working. Just skip past the screens just so you can see the gameplay. So there we go. I have no idea what the jump key is. Oh, there we go. And then just hit escape to cancel out. And there we go, so that's that you're up and running now. That, you know, so what I've literally done is I've just set up the network. You know, at this point we've not, you know, we only used that to add the ROMs on, put the ROMs in, and away we go. But obviously, taking it to the next level, we want to put some nice artwork, artwork in here to make it look, make it look all nice. So what we can do, like I say, sorry, adding, going back to the adding the ROMs, I did it via the network. The other other thing you can do is, like I say, if you've got them on USB drive, you can you can plug it into this device and copy them across. And what you'll find is when you're in the main menu, and depending on what system you've got, you might need to plug a keyboard in. But if you hit the F1 key. It kind of drops you into this. This is Fly Explorer. So you'll see here, if you plug a USB drive, it will pop in the list here, and it'll be a case of just browsing a USB drive, finding your ROMs, um, right click, copying, then going back to the ROMs link here. So I get the mouse to work. Let's find the virtual machine. There you go. Wow. I'm not sure it's going to work very well. But anyway, you use the mouse to click through here, click on ROMs right click paste and it will copy it from USB drive to the other drive so you don't need to do the home network method I just find that easier because I've got batteries here running on a separate separate machine in a different room I can do that but yeah like I say if you've got a single machine just yeah plug it in and use this this interface here to uh, to copy across so just got to try and get out of here now with the mouse working properly I'll just use the keyboard. Just go down to, to close window, and then you're back into the main system. So that, that's kind of two two main ways of getting your system, your games on. So now, next step, do some artwork, artwork scraping. So again, let's go into the menu, and let's go down to scraper. Um, if we hit enter here, there's a couple of different scrapers you can use. Um, I recommend screen scraper; it works really well. Um, Obviously, it's up to you which ones you uh, you pick. So we we'll go down to settings, um, image source. So you can change all this around. Of, of the main image source is kind of the image it shows in the in the list, and it's also used some for backgrounds in some some themes as well. So, but I tend to leave it as a default. So, so the image source is screenshot. The box source. If you go into here, you have. So this is obviously the, the front box of the of the game, either a 2D flat box or a 3D box. I tend to use 2D box art because 
you get better matching. Not not all games have 3D box art made for them. So I'll stick to two. And then the logo source. So when browsing through um, the list of games, you can have a, a logo. And that's either a transparent logo. So you have one logo, a bit like the Mega Drive one that we've got that we've got here. It's like a transparent cutout version, if you like. You have that for each game. Or marquee is more of a rectangular box. Almost like if you think of an arcade machine, you've got the marquee at the top with the name of the game with some, some graphics. It's a bit, bit more of a, a square logo, I guess, if you like. I tend to use wheel. I think that, that works quite well. I like that one. So, but obviously, you, you can play with these and see what which ones you prefer. So I'll stick with the wheel. Um, and then there's the whole bunch of extra stuff. So community scraping, I leave on. So as you browse through the games, they'll have a rating that other people have rated the games. So you can see which ones are the most popular, etc. Um, video, I tend to turn on. Could just obviously it takes up more disk space, the more artwork you scrape. So just be aware if you've got quite a small USB drive and you want just you know, a few games and you don't want to, you haven't got much space, maybe turn video off or you know, don't even have to scrape artwork at all if it wants to, but I would recommend it. Um, so yeah, you can play with these and fan art again is sort of background artwork. You can download bezels through here, but I'd probably say stick to the bezel project if you want to do bezels. Um, there's the back side of the box. <laughs> um, obviously normally in this theme you won't see it, but some themes would use that as well. Um, there's a map and a manual for the game which you can use. And then for screen scraper you need to put in a username and password, which is free. You go to the screen scraper website. At, mm, which is again I'll put all the links in the description but it's uh, yeah, screenscraper.fr then yeah some of the stuff is in uh, in French there's my username and login um, but yeah come over here create a free account and even with a free account you get something like 50,000 scrapes or 50,000 um, connections per day so that should be more than anyone but you know if you do have a huge collection that you're trying to scrape you might have to do it over a, a couple of days um, but yeah like I say just register a free account really recommend that works really well um, so I'll just put in my details here Okay, and then password, which I will have to blur out. And then I'm go across to the tick. Now I can go back. Now I can. Now you can tell it which game to scrape. So you can say, scrape all my games, no matter whether they've already been scraped or not. You might want to refresh the artwork, or um, only scrape games that are missing any media so some games might have say the box art but might not have the fan art so this will scrape them and then this one will only scrape games that are missing all media so i'm just going to scrape all because you know there's not many on there you can say ignore ones that you scraped recently so if i scrape in the last 15 days don't bother doing it again again this is helpful if you've got a huge collection but we're starting off so i say no and then obviously you can go in you can pick which systems that you want to you want to scrape so if you go in here, you can say, okay, select none. And then I want to go, I want to do that one and that one, maybe that one. But again, we're quite small here. So I'll say select all, hit back. When you're ready, you can hit scrape now. Oh, my login details are wrong. Let me just go and fix that. I thought I knew them. Let's just go and check that. Okay. Quick Wi Fi. There we go. Right, so, game's missing any media. Perfect. All. Don't ignore any. And do all systems. Right, it's great now. There we go. So, you can see in the top right corner, as soon as when we download a theme, you get it kind of happens in the background. And so I'll have that 
going away now. It's, it's not going to take too long. But it looks like it happens in the background, so you can just, you can happily carry on. Um, while that's doing that, I'll just show a couple other other bits and pieces. Um, so where should we go? So obviously sound settings, I think I showed earlier, where you can change the volume, etc. You notice at the top of the menu, you do have Kodi, the Kodi Media Player built in. So I think the idea is if you've got this kind of dedicated PC sitting somewhere, you can use it as, as a media center as well. And there is an option somewhere to, to launch Kodi at boot. So you can, if you want to, have it start straight into Kodi and then drop out the battery zero to play games if you want to and use it as a, as a media center. So I won't bother going into Kodi at the moment because that's like a completely separate thing. But it's basically, for those that don't know it, it's basically like a, a media player so you can play your, your, your videos, music, a whole bunch of add-ons to, to stream stream bits and pieces, you know, media files. Um, yeah, so it's basically a, a very popular media player. Um, so under game settings, like I say, we had the ga update games list we used before. Um, there's a whole bunch of options here about you can change the aspect ratio, um, um, rendering and shaders is things like um, so you want to like upscale games and improve the graphics and apply shaders and shaders do things like make the screen look like an old CRT as scan lines you know, give that retro feel decorations is the same thing as bezels really it's what you know, appears on screen um, there's a whole bunch of options in here about loading and saving states and so a whole bunch of kind of like advanced um, Settings. Uh, the missing BIOS check is a handy one. So this will go through and check which bar files are missing. See, we've got a lot, <laughs> a lot of that missing. Obviously, you saw there when we played Mega Drive that doesn't need a BIOS file, so that, that plays fine. So that, you know, is all the Amiga BIOS files that you, you would need. And like I say, in in the link in the description is a link that's got a pack that's got all these files in it. You can see all, all the numbers are in. It's quite quite a lot. So we'll. Uh, Let's come out of there for now. And there's an option if you want to yeah, check for bar file before running the game. So it will actually check and, and tell you that you're missing a bar file. It's handy. Again, controllers we, we already looked at. So the user interface. So as we did earlier, we have actually got another theme we downloaded now. So if I switch to this, uh, when it first does it, nothing happens. But if you hit escape to go back, it will then reload. And so you'll see the, in the top corner, the uh, scraping still happens. But now we're in a different a different theme. So the main menu stays the same. Obviously the colour and, and stuff and the font has probably changed. But the actual, actual interface has changed. So as you can see, this is a much nicer interface. Much more flashy. Um, run, runs OK in the, in the virtual machine. Obviously it'll look a lot better on, on your machine. Um, you see like the, yeah, the logo, the the system logos on the right hand side are, are animated slightly that bounce up and down. The background artwork is just moving and in the bottom left you get the kind of preview um, video snap of the different systems. So yeah, it's quite a nice quite a nice theme this. And obviously at the moment we're adding some games for Mega Drive. Obviously elsewhere in the world it was known as Genesis. So this logo has that Genesis there. But you could go and change that if you wanted to. It's just a, 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 an artwork file you can change. Anyway, yeah, so that's that's changing the theme, so just, just changes the whole look and feel of the whole thing. Um, uh, what else is there? There's, like I said, I don't want to go into much of the in-depth, like sort of advanced features. Um, but if you go back to where we were, go back to the theme set. Then once you have chosen a theme, if you want to, you can then go into the theme configuration and then customize the theme itself. So some of them have different views, like different color set, different icon set. There's you know. Whole bunch of options you can you can change, but well, see that's uh, personal preference. Um, screen saver settings. So again, if you if you leave it unattended, whether it'll just in the screen, go to black, play a random video. So play one of the video snaps that you got downloaded. Is a, another good one. Slideshow pictures. So some of the fan work, fan fan art, or screenshots that kind of stuff. It'll just scroll through those. Um, or or suspend the machine. I tend to leave it on dim. Um, yeah, transition between the different lists and the, when the game launches, what transition happens, or you it fades in or out, or the game slides across the screen, or yeah, <laughs> whether you choose to show the clock in the bottom right hand corner, 
turn that on and off. Uh, most stuff doesn't actually, you can see the clock still there, it doesn't really take effect until you actually exit out of the menu. Yeah, and, and you like I say, a whole bunch of uh, advanced options. And there you go, the clock's gone now. Uh, game collection. Oh, can't go into there while it's scraping. Fair enough. Um, network stuff update. I think most of it we would cover now. System settings, like I say, we were here earlier to uh, change the region, but there's other stuff about changing the the look of the clock, whether it's 24 or 48 hour. Um, information one's quite handy, just gives the information about your system, how much disk space you've got left, um, how your disk is formatted. You can see here we're on the x86 64 platform, but if you're on Pi, that would be different. So, amount of RAM. I mean, this is just a, a virtual machine I built to, to run this, 2 gig of RAM. Um, yeah, all about the processor, number of CPUs, and then the uh, the video card. Obviously, it's a virtual virtual video card I'm running here. Um, come up there. Like I said, there's, there's things about power saving mode. Where you can change that. Uh, Texas Beach. Like I said, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. Cody settings in there. Um, the hardware settings. Hopefully, you won't need to play play with. But if you've got a graphics card that's got multiple video outputs, you might need to set it to the right output. Um, again, for audio as well, if you've got multiple um, sound cards in your system, you might need to pick the right one there. Um, hopefully, auto will work for you. There's around, you know, changing the screen rotation. Um, overclock, I think, is more uh, specific to Raspberry Pi and the single board computers, so you can uh, push on overclock them a bit if you need to. Um, uh, the storage device, so this is, if you can, if you've got more than one, um, one storage device, you can. You can keep the games and stuff on a different, a different hard drive. Um, backup user data is an option to uh, basically back up. Once you've got it up and running, configured it, done some tweaking, artwork, all that kind of stuff, you can use this to back up your, your data. So if you do need to start again, you can basically re restore from there. Um, this is the option I mentioned earlier. If you, if you wanted to basically put this onto a dedicated machine and you want to put it onto the internal hard drive of the machine, like I said, you could open that machine up, take that drive out, plug it into your Windows machine temporarily and put the image onto it, and then obviously shut down, take it back out, put it back into the new machine and, and fire up and away you go. Obviously that involves taking it apart, got the potential of damaging something or losing something. <laughs> but so the easy way to do it is is use this option here. So like I say, just um, have a USB stick temporarily, put Batasera on it, boot that machine up from the USB, and then you can click here, install a new disk. Um, and then you, you'll have the target. Um, I did add, add a second disk into this virtual machine, the 64 gig drive, so you can, I can pick that as a target. And then it says, okay, what's that gonna be? And when it says target architecture, that's whether it's, you know, a different device, uh, yeah, a Raspberry Pi or whatever, but obviously it's a PC we're doing. And then you go, are you sure? Yes or no? And then you click install. And it will basically then this requires a an internet connection because it doesn't just you know copy what's on USB drive to it. It downloads the image from the uh, Batasera website. So your your USB stick that you're running from needs enough space to download that image. And I think it's what between four or six gig in size. So you need you know you need a system with enough space on to download that onto the USB drive. Once it's downloaded, it will then install it. Or copy it across or basically what we did netcher write that image to the internal hard drive and then like i say once that's done you can then power this down take out the usb drive turn it on and you'll then you have bad to boot up on your internal storage and away you go you've got the you then got your dedicated machine it's got bad installed it's always going to boot off the internal hard drive and, and and you're good to go so yeah this option is quite handy if you did you, you know you don't want to go through the whole palaver of Taking a drive out, plug it in the machine, imaging it, plugging it back in again. So, um, some security features here. So you can yeah, enforce security. So you can um, add a password to that network share. Because I don't know if you noticed when I browse that network share to put the ROMs on, there's no password prompt. It just let me in. If you can turn one on and, and change a change a password, etc. For that. And then there are developer options, which hopefully you shouldn't need to, to tweak. Things like the VRAM limit might be again. You might want to do on the Raspberry Pi. Um, turning VSync on and off, uh, depending on the power of machine, you might want to turn it on or off. I think overscan, I think, is probably more related to the Pi as well to get the full screen. Um, so the, 
the um, the web access is interesting. So if you turn that on, you can basically go to a browser on your home network, type in the IP address or the name Batasira, or the, the host name that you've given your machine, and colon 1234, which is the port. And it basically gives you a nice little web interface, shows you all the games you've got, um, and you can actually click, use that interface to start a game. So potentially you could use your your your, heart, your, your mobile phone or tablet or something to browse through the games, click start, and it will start on your Batasira machine. Um, you can also use it to control it and, and stop a game. So if, it, if it's running a game, let's okay. Fingers crossed it won't. But if if the game has hung or crashed or something, and you can't get it to exit out, you know, the keypad's unresponsive or whatever, or gamepad's unresponsive, you can use this web interface to go in and say. And there's an option there to stop the running emulator or stop the whole system itself. You can just click that and it will close it down for you. So yeah, that web interface is quite handy. Um, it's quite good for using it as well. You can scroll through the games you got and pick a game. Um, a lot of these other stuff um, you probably won't need. There are things around formatting drives and cleaning out um, game list and and um, removed media. So if you've if you've put a whole bunch of games on, you scraped all the media for them, it's created game list for them, but then you've had a bit of a sort out and you've taken some off. Obviously, all those media that media images that you've downloaded and video snaps are still going to be there, taking up space. So use this option and it'll do a clean up. It'll basically delete any images that are no longer used or reference but we're not going to do that now um yeah clear caches build image caches so that, and that um, option i just mentioned about downloading an image and writing it onto a hard drive this option here will just clean out anything you downloaded to free up some uh, some space but yeah there's a whole bunch of advanced stuff here that i don't really use and don't need to use most people really won't but yeah whole bunch of advanced options if you really feel like tweaking <laughs> and messing around but yeah I don't tend to do that I did I think these options I did turn on at some point just try and speed it up um, so as the system starts up it, it will preload um, some of the metadata and, and some of the user interface stuff um, so basically it preloads stuff so when you first start the machine system and start browsing through your game list there's no sort of delay as it reads them it's going to cache them into memory so but obviously like it says there they will both these features will increase boot time slightly because it will do it at boot time but it's it's not it's, it's not noticeable so that may be one to turn on um yeah so that's pretty much it um like i say there are a whole bunch of options in here but most people shouldn't need to touch them it's just a case of setting up the network, setting up your controller, adding your games, and then if you want to, scrape the artwork, and uh, and away you go. And like I say, just on the the other thing was the the bezels. Now we've got some systems in there. Oh, sorry, not themes, bezels. I can actually go and grab the Mega Drive one, install that, and again, that's now in the download queue. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll let that finish. Let's just go out to Genesis at the moment. See, even the view for the games here is look a lot nicer. And see that one, it, it started to sc scrape already. That's obviously finished, Castle of Illusions. Um, so you can see you've got, on the left hand side, you've in the middle of the screen you've got, it's got the video snap playing. At the bottom you've got the name, the information about it a little the bo 2D box art that we talked about in the right hand side you see they've got the four stars so this has got four out of five rating you can just see there's a, another star that's not lit up there and then obviously the release date number of players and the genre and developer so you, you know you get a lot of a lot of uh, extra info which is which is nice um, I think you remember on, on the basic interface there was just a grid of games you've now got this much nicer looking Interface scrolling for the different games. You can see screen 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 scrape has matched all these games so far. And, you know, it's got everything. It's got all the rating. It's got the 2D box art. It's got the, the video snap. It's got the logo on the wheel there. So yeah, what I'll do is I'll just let the the scraping finish and the uh, and those bezels download. Um, and then what I'll do once the bezels is finished, we'll maybe start Aladdin again. 
and hopefully you'll see a bezel for Aladdin. So I'm just going to pause here and be back when these uh, these downloads in the top there are finished. Right, I've left that going for a little while now, the download, but for whatever reason it's taken a while, I think my internet's probably uh, <laughs> taking the hammering at the moment. So what I do, I just, uh, it's going to have downloaded a few games now. So I've scraped a few games now, so went to Genesis. Yeah, you see. See all the artwork and stuff. Is, so some of the logos on the right hand side aren't done, but a lot of the background stuff's done. So, like I say, what we'll do is we go back to Aladdin that we did before. Oop, too far. Yeah, sorry, just back to Aladdin. I was going to do the bezels, but maybe I need to enable it, sorry. So like I said, I just want to try and get the bezels working and show those. So... Decoration set. <clears throat> you can see all the different ones I've got here. So the bezel project I want to use. Just come back out of here. Now we should be good to go. Back to Aladdin. I think what it might be is that I'm running at 4x3 already. And the bezels obviously only tend to show up if you're doing like a 16x9. Mm. Nature 20. Okay, that's where it is fine. Let's try this again. <clears throat> there we go. It's gone off screen a little bit. Let me just drag this in. Hope you can see it. It's a little bit big for the uh, <laughs> well recording window. But you can see it kind of. Now I'm running in in, in a sort of a HD widescreen format. It's now running the. <clears throat> the game in 4x3 and then obviously the the, the artwork, the, the bezels are basically filling the edge of the screen to basically fill the 16x9. If that makes sense. Yeah, so that kind of covers the shaders, um, uh, sorry, the bezels. Um, and that's kind of, the, I guess, the slides we're going to get today with the, or in this video with the reinstallation and, and setup. Um, so what we're going to look to do <clears throat> now is I'm just going to flip back, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, um, Obviously, in here I've talked about adding games and, and uh, scraping artwork, but as I say, for this build, we're going to basically supply everything you need, um, including all the games and artwork kind of uh, pre set up, so you just need to copy them across. So, what I'm going to do now is quickly go back and, and show that, show you exactly how to do it, because, like I said, there's some links in the description, um, but I'm just going to show you how to, uh, um, to, to download them, copy them across, and, and get them into your system. So, uh, without further ado, let's, let's do that. Okay, so what we're going to do is take the link for the Mega Drive games, the Mega Drive pack from the description, paste it into your address bar in your browser, um, and they're hosted on this this Mega Up site. Uh, I guess the only downside is you do get <clears throat> these kind of sort of pop-ups and some adult content, I guess. Um, but basically, ignore all this. All you want to concentrate on this uh, is this button here saying create download link. So you'll click this. And then you know, ignore ignore stuff like this. It's all kind of like meant to trick you into sort of downloading on clicking on adverts and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
again, clever ones like this that try and pretend to be a, a capture. No, no thanks. I mean, this obviously, if you had a pop up blocker, you can um, probably block a lot of this. Um, <clears throat> someone like Firefox has a good ad, ad blocker built in. Yeah, any kind of pop ups like this, just just get rid of them. What you're waiting for is, is when it actually goes through properly without giving you all that crap, it'll give you this screen here. So it's, yeah, it's a mega up screen and it'll pop up with the, um, what you want to do with the, uh, the download, save it or open it. So yeah, ignore those other little tricks and stuff they do with the, with the pop ups and the new windows and like, you know, click here to download. This is the screen you're, you're looking for. So like I say, just try that generate download link a couple of times. Once you get this pop up, just do save as, <clears throat> as you would any other file. I'm just going to stick it C temp for now, <clears throat> and that's going to download. Um, unlike a lot of the other um, kind of free <coughs> cloud storage um, type services, this one does download quite quick. Um, um, I've not seen any kind of limitations on, on speed or a daily limit, anything like that at the moment. So fingers crossed that looks all good. So it says two minutes, just going to download. What I'll do is I will let this finish, but I'll just pause the video quickly while that happens. Right, okay, download's finished. We're now, we're now finished with this uh, browser. I'll close this. No, oh, ignore that. <laughs> um, and then once I've got it downloaded, I'll have a quick look. So under C temp, we've got the Mega Drive. I've already um, downloaded as well the, the BIOS pack that's in there. Because this is mentioned in the earlier part of the video, um, but I kind of just a skirt over it, I guess. So just to show you how to do it, download it from that link. So if Mega Drive, <clears throat> open up the zip file, and you'll have a Mega Drive folder in there. You'll have all the contents, uh, and then if you browse to your, obviously with your Batistero machine running. So here's mine. Just type in its IP address. We'll have the share, and we'll have the ROMs folder, and then it has all the supported systems. All have a folder pre-existing. A lot of these will be empty, or most will be empty, and we're going to add to them as we go along and, and, and uh, build up this image. So we're just going to look for Mega Drive. And see, I've already got all the games in there. So you, you'd literally, um, I, I use, I tend to use 7-Zip, 7-Zip Manager for, for compressed files, which works quite well. So let's come in here, um, uh, do Control A in the keyboard to select everything, or you can do Edit Select All. Does the same thing. Once you've got them, literally click, drag, and then drop them in here. It'll extract them. And um, um, in my case, I'll prompt to overwrite. Um, your folder should be empty. Um, but either way, drop it in there and let it uncompress. And then um, away you go. That's, that's pretty much it. That's how you add the games. You just drop them into the folder. So uh, the other one is the, uh, the BIOS. So if you go back up to the top level of the share, you'll have a BIOS folder. Uh, and this is much the same principle. So move that to the side a little bit. So you've got the BIOS pack here. Get my windows uh, all messed up. But again, yeah, we have the contents on here. So actually with, with um, that series, there's a couple of other um, files in other locations. Um, so some configs for certain, for certain things to send you there, some configuration stuff, some extra um, graphics packs. Uh, the, the main stuff's all in the BIOS folder, so there's all the different ROMs and, and BAS files you need for various systems. But like I say, there are a few extras to make everything work smoothly. Um, uh, a BAS file for Neo Geo goes in a separate Neo Geo folder, for example. So, but basically, at this top level, all you want to do is, again, select all this lot, pick it up, um, drag it into, actually not into there, <laughs> into the top level. So you've got where well, you can see BIOS, you can see ROMs, says system. That's these folders here. So literally pick those up and drag them in here. So I'm gonna do it anyway. And now it's gonna copy and it will at some point Hopefully, I prompt you to overwrite because there's some of this stuff. There are some bits and pieces that already pre-exist. But just to make sure we get everything, we'll let this copy across and just overwrite everything. 
it says six minutes. I think it starts off as there's quite a few sort of small files which slow it down. See now, now it's jumped to one minute. So let's see how long this is gonna take, otherwise I'll I'll pause it briefly while this does this. Okay, it's finally got to the point where it's uh, complaining that there's some stuff that already exists, so I'm just going to say replace. And I'm just going to copy those. <laughs> it's, like I say, it takes a little while. Obviously, I'm copying it across the network as well, so it's a little bit slower. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> that's how easy it is to uh, to copy the uh, the bars across and how to, to add games to the system. And then obviously, once we've added those systems, um, as shown, sorry, under that Mega Drive system, as shown previously in the video, you, you either just um, restart Batasera or click on, uh, go to the main menu and update uh, the game list, and, and they magically appear. And obviously, all the artwork's already there, so all that will appear as well. You don't need to do anything, you don't need to do any art scraping, anything like that. But all there, ready to go. So, just while that's finishing off, that's I guess that's the, the end of this this first video. Obviously, so, apologies, it's quite a long one, but like I say, the first one is like the introduction how to install, get up and running, um, just to walk through some of the features. And like I said, we're gonna probably cover some more of the features, a bit more in depth, or, you know, as new ones um, come along, um, we include those or cover those in other videos. Um, but like I say, in, in a series of videos that are gonna build up, they'll be adding multiple systems um, in each video. Like I say, if you've seen the retro bat one I've done, a very similar thing, um, that's up to, I think, like video 16 at the moment, at the time of creating this. Like I say, for this one, I'm going to try and add more systems per video, just so we don't drag it out too long. Um, so, you know, I've got plans or ideas about doing other builds as well. So far, I've done Retrobat. This is now Batasera. Maybe something like um, got a launch box on, on Windows. Um, obviously, I, I, I play a lot of stuff on Android. I use uh, RetroX as the front end on, on Android on my NVIDIA Shield. Um, so, in the past, I've created a kind of a best of collection for that as well. Um, so I'll do another video on that possibly. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I mentioned in early in the video, but this is this is slightly different to other builds, I guess, because it's a, it's a best best of. Um, so for a lot of the systems, um, it's kind of like sort of the top 50, top 100 games. You know, so that's sort of the the highest rated, the most popular, most common type games. Uh, things like the arcade for the Mame and Final Burn, that figures around somewhere between six and seven hundred games. Of course, it's a much bigger system, so there's a lot more games on there um, to, to add. And obviously, some some of the larger modern systems, like things like PS2, PS3, uh, and Wii and Wii U, and that kind of stuff, where the obviously the games are just a lot bigger. Um, there's there's gonna be less of them, but obviously we're gonna add them in just to get you going. Then you can you can add more. So there will be some games for those as well. So everything's gonna be covered. Um, so like I said, I prefer to do a best of collection because I know lots of people like to have full sets for every single system. Uh, which is fine. I, I myself have some full sets um, stored elsewhere, but you end up with a front end with te literally tens of thousands of games, and half of them you're never going to play, or half of them might be a bit rubbish, or they might they might not emulate very well. They might be there, but you know they might, they might have glitches and stuff, and just not emulate very nicely. So, and obviously you're browsing through about ten thousand games on the front end is just you know it's going to be painful. Um, and obviously it's, it might slow things down as well, and, and you need a ton of storage as well to keep all those games in their full set so I prefer you know on, on my daily gaming machines I, I, I prefer to have a best of collection um, obviously it keeps the size down um, makes it better for, easier for browsing through you know, to find a game to play a game um, so yeah that, that's kind of what the collection is it's that best of um, so yeah and obviously any any comments any games you think we're missing many sets let me know and we see if we can add them in um, any other comments yeah, obviously comment in on the YouTube comments. But I've also got a, a Facebook group that I created. It's been going for a while now. And also a Discord server for those that, that um, don't trust Facebook or don't like Facebook. Um, and obviously links uh, in the description for those as well. So yeah, come come on, join, um, have, a, have a chat, ask questions about this, anything else, any suggestions for a video or any other comments in general. Just yeah, just, just let me know. Um, so as you see, this is just finished now. So we'll just, uh, that's all good to go. Um, and yeah, so hopefully you enjoy this video. Like I say, it's a bit long. The other ones will be shorter. They'll be a bit shorter and sharper, adding games, doing bits and pieces. Uh, and then we'll end up with uh, a really nice system at the end of it. So yeah, please follow and I'll uh, hopefully catch you on the next one.